Looks like I have a new letter. Stop there, Wolf Kissed. This ends now. Dag, turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment. Because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me. And I have. Against my better judgment, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dag, but that offer is gone. I have no need of it! My mind is fixed! Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home! Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death! I accept. We settle this now. Ah! A final act of courage! Very well. Let the circle be made! Pity, I would not lavish it on this poor fool. He forced my hand. Yes, and the cost of disrespect is death. You said it yourself. All he demanded, you gave him. That should be enough. I have no need for one so fragile in my hall of heroes. He fought for what he believed in. Does that not count for something? Does it? You killed him all the same. What is the true cost of disrespect? The choice lies with you. We should not have come to this, old friend. If you gave no quarter in life, you would receive none in death. <laughs>
Go to your homes. I will lay him to rest. Go to your homes! Dag accused me of betrayal. He accused me of breaking my oath. And this... This is the answer I gave him! Now you will hear the truth unbanished. None... None more than me wishes for Sigurd's safe return. You know this. You know this. All of you! And I will burn the fields! And dredge the rivers of Wessex to find him! That! That is my oath! That is my oath. Sigurd. You will not be without your Jarl, as I promise. Dag, you lived as you died, proud and defiant. I cannot begrudge you for that. Wherever you now roam, I wish you well. I'm sorry that such a fire grew between us. These new visions of Odin trouble me. Am I alone in seeing them? Or do the tales of Svartalfheim hold some other meaning? Perhaps I should warm my bones by the fire. Gather my thoughts for a moment. I do hope Sigurd knows how much he meant to you. We are beyond the time of telling such things now. Wherever you are, may your axe protect you. We think on you often, Dag. Wherever you are, may your axe protect you. We think on you often, Nag. These new visions of Odin trouble me. Am I alone in seeing them? Or do the tales of Svartalfheim hold some other meaning? Perhaps I should warm my bones by the fire. Gather my thoughts for a moment. Ah, a new letter.
Stop there, Wolfkist. This ends now. Dag, turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment, because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me. And I have. Against my better judgments, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dak. But that offer is gone. I have no need of it! My mind is fixed. Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home! Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death! This is madness, Dag. I do not accept. This is not a question, Eivor! Come! Let the circle be made! Goblet of your skull! Please! Please, both of you! Message has come. Face me, Eivor! Stop there, Wolfkist. This ends now. Dag. Turn around and walk away. Your habits are not my own, Eivor. I do not flee responsibility for the sake of my glory. I stand firm with my people. For many months, I have stood at your side, keeping faith in Sigurd's judgment, because I believed in him and his vision. Do as Eivor commands, he told me. And I have. Against my better judgment, I did as you have asked me. And where has that left us? Without a Jarl? Without a purpose? Watching you chase glory around this land like a spooked hare! You could have come to me in confidence, Dag. But that offer is gone. I have no need of it! My mind is fixed. Hear me all! I challenge Eivor for the leadership of this clan until Sigurd is safe home! Walk away, Dag. No! We fight to the death!
You spew nonsense, Dag. This is absurd. Enough! Let the circle be made! I'll burn you like a suckling pig! Please! Please, ah. both of you! Is that the best you can do? If I had any pity, I would not lavish it on this poor fool. He forced my hand. Yes, and the cost of disrespect is death. You said it yourself. All he demanded, you gave him. That should be enough. I have no need for one so fragile in my hall of heroes. He fought for what he believed in. Does that not count for something? Does it? You killed him all the same. What is the true cost of disrespect? The choice lies with you. You should not have come to this, old friend. Take this, and fly to Odin's Hall. Whatever you sought in this life, may you find it in the next. <gasps> Go to your homes. I will lay him to rest. Go to your homes! Dag accused me of betrayal. He accused me of breaking my oath. And this... This is the answer I gave him! Now you will hear the truth unmanaged. None, none more than me wishes for Sigurd's safe return. You know this. You know this. All of you! And I will burn the fields, and dredge the rivers of Wessex to find him. That! That is my oath! That is my oath. Sigurd. You will not be without your Jarl, as I promise. Dag. 
You lived as you died, proud and defiant. I cannot begrudge you for that. I miss hearing you tell your stories, old friend. But I remember them well. I do hope Sigurd knows how much he meant to you. We are beyond the time of telling such things now. Look at Eivor. you, Julie. Glad then to. What did the Eivor? How do you feel, Eivor? 
I would rather not talk about it. I understand. Come to me. I want to see the Alliance map. What of Essex? We received a summons from the Elderman and his Lady of Colchester, requesting you specifically for a matter of great secrecy. Foreboding. And who is this Elderman? One of King Alfred's lackeys? According to my scouts, he is a man who cares more for his own indulgences than the safety of his people. Approach with care. I will leave at once. An alliance in Essex would be invaluable, but go with caution. Zunin, guide me. It seems Elderman Beerstan has made this ruin his longhouse. Perhaps because you have drunk the barrel. Lord? Ah, a heroic looking Dane in our midst. I'm looking for Pearson, the elderman of the Shire. Our Lord is not at home, but his wife is receiving visitors upstairs in her usual fashion. If you speak with her, pass on that we've run out of ale. Perhaps because you have drunk the barrel dry? Damn Beerstan. His household is as poorly run as his land. Estrid is a good wife. Far better than he deserves. You would say that, Adrian. Your wife acts like a sow in a skirt. My sweater right is a worthy woman, you coxcomb. But she's an excellent cook. With a fine nose for truffles. If Beerstan does not return soon, wine will not be the only thing spilled upon his floors. Now, gentlemen, everyone is fractious with this waiting. Let us be civil at least. <laughs> Who was 
One cry from me! Sheathe your blade, lady. I'm Eivor of the Raven Clan, here at your husband's request. Another Dane. I am Estrid, wife of the Lord of Essex. As you may have heard, my lord is not at home. You don't speak as one from here. Where's your home? These rain-sodden bogs and fog-washed hills are not my home, thank Christ. I come from Francia. My grandfather walked on Frankish sod. He spoke of an appetite for conquest that rivaled our own. Sadly, my conquests are reduced to pettish thanes and graceless men. All Frankish fire extinguished. I'm wary of rounding up Saxons. Is your husband stolen, drunk, or wayward? He'll be stalking the woodlands today, hunting game and ignoring the vital affairs of Essex. One such affair is why we called for you. If I can find him, I'll remind him of his duties. Ah, such would be a miracle. His favorite haunt is southwest of here. The lavender fields there attract the prey, God help him. With luck, he hasn't been eaten, but I'll return either way. is a godly virtue, Adred. Even the saints were tired of waiting for Beerstan to hang up his bow, did Discuss the affairs of this land, with or without him. Sika is for where the heck are them come with Bathe?
Pearson, ready. As a feast for bears. Ah, we'll fight to the death, worthy one. Your weapon strikes true. Well fought, friend. I would not have survived this ambush without you. You have my gratitude to stumble upon me in my moment of greatest peril. Perhaps you were God sent. I'm Estridsend. Your wife and the Thanes of Essex both want your balls in a blacksmith's anvil. When do they not? You could return and report that the Savage Claw took me. Poor Beerstan, his exit pursued by a bear. And make the beast Lord of Essex in your stead. No doubt my Estrid would prefer his velvet paws to my calloused hands. So, who are you? A cell sword? I am Eivor of the Raven Clan. You hinted at an alliance for the loan of my unique talents. It's blood, yes. Let us return to Colchester at once, and we'll speak more of the delicate matter on my mind. I'm glad you answered my summons. I did not expect such a skilled fighter. It's good I came when I did. You lost many men on this hunt. Good men, all. They will have the proper rights and their families will be cared for. Your people sacrificed much for your sport. Your people's... Your people sacrificed much for your sport. They did. There is no balm for my tortured heart. Why did you ask me here? Do you believe in true love, Eivor? I have loved. But have you truly? Has a longing burned in your breast, a sweet lingering pain, paralyzing you with its sting? There's pain enough in battle. I do not seek it out in love. I long for it. The thrill of a fight softly won. My wife Estrid lacks fire. She is a fish out of water, cold and dead. She showed great passion when I met her, keeping your thanes in check. Oh, they love her, it is true. Some with too much devotion. And I have not been a good and attentive husband. Always been a plucked goose in matters of love, and a piss poor ruler to boot. Strong must be the hand that steers the ship, this time. My hand would rather tug the cat gut of a well crafted bow, my eyes narrowing at the sight of prey. Aye, the crown sits heavy on the head. Then let us run wild and free in the woods as the wolves do. Live on our wits, prowl and stalk and feast. You have a romantic way about you, Beston. Do not fret. My guards will not worry you when we are together. You mismark me if you think I'm capable of worry. Have you built your city in the ruins of another? No, these builders are lost to the annals of time. Far advanced of the Saxon hovels of Wattle and Daub. I have ambition to build a great palace myself, with mosaics and balmy courtyards. What stops you? That which stops all but the most creative minds. Coin, imagination, talent. And your people? Is Essex happy? That is a question I never really ponder. I suppose they are. I hope they are. Alfred believes I rule like a chickless hen, flapping and squawking over... for nothing but the farmer's dinner. He interferes? No. He disapproves. Is that not in... 
ready to help me fend off the spears of their displeasure? Let them speak their woes. I'll advise you if I can. Who is this owl, Beeston, that twitters in your ear? An advisor, nothing more. Here to help Essex navigate her brewing storms. Now, my dear brethren, Adred, perhaps you will start us off. What troubles you? You're a disgrace, Beerstan. Couldn't get a sow pissed in an alehouse. Alfred's men are crawling all over Essex. King Alfred, yes. Though it is within his right, the constant presence of his men is certainly an issue. When the months are coldest, the mistletoe is full grown, cloaked in her winter strength. Meaning that we should weather this? Stay strong? Yes, that's it. Not bend in the wind like stalks of wheat. And you, Wyatt, what do you say? Your preparations for the Lammas Festival. How can you think of spending so much coin when your people are starving? Often should one make an early meal, nor fasting come to the feast. The feast, yes. The festival! This is not for full bellies, but to bless the loaf. Does that not bring us all good fortune? And Aldrich, do you yap like a she-hound as Adred does? You know my thoughts, Beerston. The feared. How can we give men to Alfred for his wars when our harvest suffers day by day? Refuse to send your men. Let Alfred's people die for his hopeless cause against the Norse. Then we refuse. Refuse our king? Has madness taken your wits, Beerston? There. Have I not answered all your questions? I thank you for your candor, Beerstan. You have put my mind somewhat at ease. Aye. Indeed. Good. With that, we are concluded, my lords. Now, if you'll pardon me, I have much to discuss with my wife. Ceased their prattling. A fine outcome, Abel. The very soul of balance. A firm hand is all you need, Beeston. Whether on your hunting bow or on your helm. All this talk of hunting makes me long for the woods. Your wife awaits, Beeston. Aren't you worried some other man will drench your sheets with his sweat? Ha! <laughs> she does as she must. You have done the impossible, Dane. Returned my errant gander to his coop. My pettish love. Such a stormy countenance clouds the sun of my return. Your thanes drank the ale the abbot gifted us. All of it. Now that is a tragedy my heart will not easily overcome. If he looked at me with the same affection he shows for hunting deer, our marriage might have survived.
I notice your love has gone sour. Was it fresher than this? <laughs> there is so little difference between love and hate. It's difficult to say where the sourness comes from. So, what do you need of me? Our affairs are more of heart than of state, Eivor. What little passion there was between us faded into bickering long ago. We would have our freedom, Eivor. I from my wife, and my wife from Essex. I'm too sharp a weapon for so soft a task. Why not part and be done with it? Oh, were I a Dane, and divorce as simple as a slit throat. But it's not so easy as that. Explain yourselves, clear and plain, and I will do it. The poetry here is mind mud. We had a plan, a simple plan. A woman lost and a woman found. Some time ago, we paid a Dane to kidnap me and ferry me safely to Francia. As you can see, he did not deliver. He was certainly thorough in other regards. Some Norse can be quick to take coin and slow to earn it. If I give my word, it is not broken. Could we try the kidnap again? Much of the planning is done. It would only take a more trustworthy overseer. It should be a bold venture if we do. Loud and brash and seen by all. During our Lamas festival, merry peasants and guards with wandering eyes. Your return to Francia would need a swift ship, with a captain ready to leave England. We could ask him. I would have thought his steed and seamen spent. Come find me in the market, Eivor. Our unwelcome guests require food and ale to soften their anger. My wife is a gracious and attentive host, Eivor. The only thing that keeps my braying thanes at bay. And the woman found? A darling Maybud, Alvida, my childhood sweetheart. I left her twenty years ago in Malden to marry my prickled pear. Twenty years? Can an ember so cold be reignited? We can hope. You must fan the flame. Find her, bring her to my lakeside cottage, and light a bonfire there. I will know to come. I believe she lived in the last house in Malden. A small, sweet place where fond memories were made. I will do as you both ask, and ask Freya for success in this love game. Good luck in your endeavors, Eivor. I pray you find my Alvida with a fair face and a yearning heart. Now, should I look for Alvida first, or meet with Estrid at the marketplace? She will remember me, won't she? Yet what if she's married already? Or buried in the cold clay earth? No, I must not think on it. Remember a lover from so long ago? Would I? Last house in Malden. All of it I should be here. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Sister, is that not enough? Peace, boy. I'm not with these men. I came to speak with your sister. That's all. A day in Essex. Now, here's a day riddled with strange portents and happenings. What is your name? I'm Ellerich, the man of this house. Who are you? And why have you come? I'm looking for your sister at the behest of another. Behest? I've got no money to speak of, and my sister is well past the marrying age. Do you know where they're holding Olvida? Yet another stay at the King's pleasure. The prison camp at Brentwood, far to the west. I'll bring her to the lake house north of there. Meet us there if you wish. If you promise you will find her, I will. <laughs> 